Good afternoon, everybody. This is a live severe weather update as storms are erupting across western Oklahoma. Already big time severe weather uh, reported from the eastern Texas panhandle into western Oklahoma. Golf ball size hail uh, was already reported uh, near the Miami, uh, Oklahoma area, Miami, Oklahoma, northeastern Texas panhandle. And the biggest concern right now is this renegade storm that uh, or a cluster of renegade storms that are trying to develop. Uh, near Elk City right now. Looks like another updraft, dominant updraft, developing down here near Hobart. And uh, the surface low is definitely coming out a little bit further south than many of the short-range models were showing, even as recent as this morning. And uh, that's why uh, supercells and renegade supercells have developed well ahead of the surging cold front. Uh, any of these are candidates to become a dominant uh, supercell that could even develop tornado potential, especially if it can hold together uh, for the next couple of hours and uh, reach the western gradient of that low-level jet. Uh, we already can start to look at uh, some of the velocity here, see if these things are rotating. It looks like they developed uh, rotating, and you've got kind of a broad couplet here to the west of Sentinel, uh, north of Retrop right now to the west of Port. Uh, that's the, uh, uh, the, the original cell, Storm A, that we were watching as it was developing. And now we've got this storm down near the Hobart area, mainly a convergent uh, signature right there uh, with this storm as well. As those inflow winds are converging around an intensifying updraft, almost like a vacuum cleaner effect. And a great tool to look at these storms and see which ones are dominant updrafts is to use the Echo Tops feature. Uh, because generally the stronger mesocyclones, uh, the stronger storms, the more robust storms are extending further up into the troposphere. And uh, this is definitely a useful tool to use. And uh, we've got some echo tops here uh, that are starting to approach 35,000 feet, 35 to 40,000 feet uh, with this dominant storm. Uh, this one down to the west of Hobart is a new updraft. Uh, probably need a special weather statement on this one as well. Uh, this one certainly could go severe. And uh, the Storm Prediction Center elected to issue a severe thunderstorm watch uh, across the northern half of Oklahoma. And uh, also a special weather statement for these storms to the west of Elk City uh, that are probably going to go severe pretty soon. These are a little bit closer to the upper support, uh, that elevated mixed layer that is ejecting off to the east. And uh, that surface low is definitely coming in a bit further south. And I'm going to show you that the environment that these storms are also moving into. I'm using the Radar Omega app here uh, to break down this severe weather. This was my original target was Woodward, uh, but as the models evolved and as this uh, uh, system evolved, uh, it became evident that the surface low was coming in further south and actually coming into southwestern Oklahoma. So many of these have kind of been elevated supercells. Uh, the, the moisture axis, the instability didn't quite reach up this far, far north, at least in a surface space sense. Uh, but definitely some big time hailers out here with all those steep lapse rates of that elevated mixed layer coming into the southern plains here. This is definitely a supercell storm in southwestern Kansas between Ashland and Mineola right now. You can tell this is uh, elevated. It almost has a uh, dominant RFD that's like a mini bow echo uh, here with just some turbulence along its leading edge. Uh, this is the effective forward flank here. Uh, some hydrometeors falling into the inflow area here. But anytime you get this big time dominant RFD like this with a little bit of a messy appearance instead of a clean, crisp forward flank, that usually means that it's a bit of an elevated supercell. And that's exactly uh, what's happening here. Uh, there's a lot of upper support coming into southwestern Kansas right now. Uh, this is also a severe storm with damaging winds and large hail. Uh, down here uh, in a, into the Oklahoma panhandle as well, closing into the Buffalo area. Uh, big time hailer coming in here with a bit of an appendage extending well off to the southeast. This is definitely an elevated storm as well. And you remember this morning we looked at those forecast soundings and it was definitely evident there would be kind of a shallow stable layer right at the surface. And that would get worse as we get closer and especially after sunset when that low level shear was really expected to uh, ramp up. Uh, these storms are directly underneath the 850 millibar trough axis, so uh, the low-level jet's a little bit lacking this far west. It's definitely well to the west of the main low-level jet axis, which is across eastern Oklahoma, <clears throat> excuse me, into southeastern Kansas. But these are severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, hail to the size of one inch in diameter. A 64-mile-per-hour wind gust was measured at Gage Airport there in western Oklahoma. Uh, so there's definitely very strong winds getting mixed down to the surface. And this one just went severe as well. If you remember in this morning's briefing, we were talking about the potential for even some cold core type uh, supercells directly underneath the cold pocket of air aloft. And uh, that front, though, would eventually start surging to the south in the Texas panhandle and undercut those and eliminate that land spout threat. But these things have hung out a lot longer than I anticipated, just to the north of the radar site there. Uh, to the near the Fritch, uh, Texas area in the Texas Panhandle. This is a big time hail producer right here. 
uh, especially in this area. Uh, probably hail to the size of golf balls coming out of this directly underneath that cold pocket of air loft. A little bit of panhandle magic happening here just to the south of Fritch. Another storm developing to the west of Amarillo. Uh, this one's uh, closer to the I-40 corridor. And eventually these are all going to be undercut uh, by that surging cold front. And then uh, the focus needs to go to western Oklahoma along the I-40 corridor here. Uh, Elk City, uh, southern Oklahoma. Definitely watching these renegades uh, very closely as they're slowly starting to mature uh, into supercells. And notice how these ones have a very crisp gradient here along the forward flank. And especially that concave updraft right there. These are classic supercellular beans on radar, uh, basically supercells that are uh, developing as they're rotating because the wind shear is so substantial. And uh, you can tell that these are surface-based storms because of this very tight reflectivity gradient on the southern side. Uh, this storm is heading toward Burns Flat, Oklahoma, and the rotation is definitely uh, starting to increase with this storm as well. Here you can see it to the southwest of Burns Flat. Still, though, not a very tight couplet with this, and this is because most of the low-level shear is just to the east of these storms. So, so far we've got hailers <clears throat> dominating across western Oklahoma. Uh, I think that these storms to the south of this main one, the main renegade, this main renegade developed first, and then we've had these additional renegades develop uh, down to its south, uh, likely obstructing the inflow uh, just a little bit into the dominant storm that is Storm A. Uh, but a lot of times they go up in clusters like this, and then one of them will dominate, and then one of these is going to survive until the western edge of the low-level jet, probably up near the Weatherford area, near I-40, maybe to the north of I-40. I could see this thing starting to develop tornado potential, maybe up into this zone, uh, right on the eastern side uh, of that instability axis. Uh, definitely a, a decent core as well to the south of Cheyenne. And all of these are probably going to go severe pretty soon. Right now they're producing marginally severe hail. Uh, I've got some storm chasing contacts with eyes on the ground uh, on these. I'm trying to get uh, an assessment of just how big the updraft bases are with these. If they have very big, crisp updraft bases, and they're probably going to mature into supercells and develop a tornado potential. But if they have those skinny bases that are a bit strung out uh, by the wind shear, then that's the sign of an anemic, weaker supercell storm that probably is not going to develop a tornado potential. Uh, but I think that one of these probably will eventually. All of them uh, will have, be big-time hail producers. And uh, here's Gizmo uh, right now. Uh, we are uh, up at my mom's place uh, monitoring this severe weather, doing weather briefings. Uh, she uh, suggested that it would be a bad idea uh, for me to chase these storms and potentially infect everybody with the flu. Um, so I stayed back here, and I'm just going to break these down live, doing a live radar breakdown as this event unfolds. Woodward, uh, sometimes there's a bit of a radar hole here near the Viasai area. So even though these reflectivity cores may not look quite as intense, uh, they actually are intense. There's actually big-time hail, probably the size of golf balls, falling with this. Sometimes to the southwest of that Viasai radar uh, there's a bit of some beam beam blockage uh, with that radar beam. This one right here, though, probably getting fully sampled. This is definitely a supercell storm to the southwest of Fort Supply. Definitely some enhanced hail sizes in this core. Uh, between Gage and Fort Supply, we actually had a 64-mile-per-hour wind gust uh, that was measured at Gage uh, Airport there. And just to the northeast, likely some golf ball-sized hail as that supercell storm is headed right toward Fort Supply headed off to the northeast. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of these in the convective line could also eventually reach that low-level jet axis uh, further east, closer to the Enid area. Uh, one of these are probably going to develop a tornado threat at some point. All of them are going to have uh, the uh, threat of severe hail. Look at this core here to the south of Cheyenne really blow up. And uh, this uh, radar site is sampling higher up in this storm, so you're sampling hail that is about to fall out of this storm, being suspended high up in that elevated mesocyclone, about to fall out to the south of Cheyenne uh, there. That could definitely be uh, an intense core. Probably going to have hail sizes increasing to the size of golf balls right there as well. But this event is just getting started, and as I mentioned, uh, there is a severe thunderstorm watch uh, that got issued. They ended up not going with the red box. I think that that's a good... A uh, good call, uh, given uh, the the uh, potential negative scenarios uh, for uh, um, uh, to prevent tornadoes from happening. But here you can see that surface low in the latest RAP analysis coming in a little bit further south than the models were forecasting. The HRRR that was predicting that surface low would be a little closer to the Kansas border across northwestern Oklahoma. That surface low came in a bit further south. Uh, that dry line, there's dry line storms that have initiated in southwestern Oklahoma. 
Let's look at the wind shear here real quick. And this is the edge of the low-level jet axis to the east of Weatherford, probably up toward El Reno. Uh, so these storms are developing well to the west of that gradient. It's kind of a, a rough gradient here on the western side of that uh, low-level jet. But this is a stronger low-level shear. It's going to be sufficient for a tornado threat. So if these renegades in uh, southwestern Oklahoma from the I-40 corridor down toward Hobart are able to survive until the western edge of this low-level jet, then they'll likely develop a tornado threat. And that'll be in the next one to two hours when they uh, finally do uh, reach the western edge of that. Uh, here you can see most of the instability uh, just on the wet to the west of that low-level jet with the wind shear really ramping up on the eastern gradient of that instability axis. So these storms are in the middle of a cape blob with surface space cape uh, analyzed up to 2,000. Here you can see the dry line, these southwesterly winds mixing in a county or two into Oklahoma. That's what initiated these supercell storms. And they've got a long way to go before they start to encounter any convective inhibition. So they're going to continue to mature in the center of this instability axis. And then when they start reaching the enhanced low-level shear on the eastern side of this instability axis, that's when they could develop that tornado threat. Here you can see the effective helicity, basically the low-level storm relative helicity here, just on the eastern edge of that instability axis and it, we can look at the 850 analysis you can already start to see the 850 winds starting to veer a bit uh, more of a westerly component uh, increasing off to the east a, a core the core of the low level jet across eastern oklahoma with that 50 knot barb uh, there into eastern oklahoma um, so these storms do have a decent window to mature drop a lot of hail and then toward the end of their life cycle once they get to the eastern edge of that instability axis that's when i think that uh, they could uh, develop that tornado potential. But we've got another one to two hours of primarily hail producers. And that's why the Storm Prediction Center went with the blue box uh, for this event so far. Uh, but I think that uh, there is going to be a tornado threat when this cluster of storms down here, just to the south of the I-40 corridor, uh, starts to arrive into this area. This is when it's really going to start to encounter uh, that stronger low-level shear, especially up into this zone. Uh, in Oklahoma. It'll be to the north of I-40, to the northeast of Weatherford, to the northwest of El Reno. I think that's the area that's going to have the greatest tornado potential as this cluster of storms lifts off to the northeast, north of I-40. That's when it's going to encounter that stronger low-level wind shear, and that's why I'm watching these so closely. And I'm going to continue to go live uh, here uh, throughout this late afternoon and evening. And this one just went severe to the northwest of Elk City. And uh, this one's well west of that low-level jet axis, but still some big hail dropping here to the northwest of Elk City, southeast of Cheyenne. Look at that classic supercellular shape there. You can see the cyclonic curvature. So uh, this is a big-time uh, supercell. Big hail uh, falling right there. Uh, echo tops are probably way up there as well. Uh, let's see if this thing is rotating. A bit of an elevated mesocyclone, uh, so it doesn't have a low-level mesocyclone just yet. Uh, but uh, I would also watch that storm uh, for the potential of big hail. And it's going to slide just to the north of Elk City, eventually heading toward the Butler area. Uh, but this storm is definitely intensifying as it moves uh, off to the east, moving off the dry line, moving into that deeper moisture. Uh, this is a severe thunderstorm, probably hail to the size of golf balls, even though the warning indicates hail up to one inch. Uh, it's moving to the northeast at 35 miles an hour. Uh, I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see some golf ball sized hail already in this storm as it passes just to the north of Elk City. Uh, this one's struggling a little bit <clears throat> near Burns Flat. Looks like it's splitting. And uh, maybe this right mover uh, with the uh, uh, sharp gradient and reflectivity on its southeastern side, maybe it'll absorb some of these other updrafts off to its southeast. It's possible that the um, inflow could be impeded a bit. So really I'm watching this one between Cordell and Hobart. Uh, this one has unimpeded access to inflow and that low-level jet. And uh, this one, when it gets closer to I-40 and eventually north of I-40, I think will uh, be the best candidate to reach that <clears throat> low-level shear that is sufficient for tornadoes. But meanwhile, we got <clears throat> this line from Cheyenne all the way down through Serre to the west of Elk City. Watching closely, these are big-time hail producers right here uh, that are intensifying. And I expect that uh, <clears throat> this updraft down near Serre is the next one uh, to become severe and intensify. That one's probably going to uh, has its sights set on the Elk City area there. But definitely some renegades developing ahead of a dry line. And then we've got these back along the cold front, back in the Texas Panhandle that have also gone severe. Look at that core to the south of Fritch. That's probably the biggest hail of anywhere in the Southern Plains right now. Uh, just a beautiful 
It's almost shaped like the hodograph a little bit. Bit of an inflow notch here. Wow, there's the new one. Look at that S shape. Almost like an S shaped hodograph right there. Probably the northerlies of the front starting to undercut this thing. Bit of a pseudo supercell here, but definitely a big time hail producer passing just to the north of McBride, Hillard, uh, south of Borger in the Texas Panhandle. And that's post frontal, post dry line. Very interesting storm to watch there. But these are the ones that I'm watching in southwestern Oklahoma. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning to the north of Elk City. And we're going to be watching these evolve <clears throat> as they close into that greater wind shear just to the east of these. Woodward, you've got a severe thunderstorm warning with that convective line getting closer and closer. More elevated supercells up here. Most of the instability is uh, along I-40 and just to the south of I-40 right now. Definitely keeping an eye on all of these. Damaging straight line winds. Big hail is a main threat, mainly big hail. Uh, but I think that the tornado threat is more of an I-40 situation. Uh, down into this re the region enclosed by Weatherford, Fairview, El Reno, uh, Enid. Kind of this area to the west of Oklahoma City. This is the area that I'm watching for eventual tornado threat. When this cluster of renegades in southwestern Oklahoma matures and moves into this environment, that's when they could start interacting with the western edge of that low-level jet and really start to ramp up. But I'm watching it live here. Thank you guys for joining me. Stay safe in western Oklahoma. And I'm going to go live as soon as a tornado threat looks like it's becoming apparent. But we've probably got another hour or two of primarily hailers until these storms can survive to the western edge of that low-level jet in that area that I just circled. So thank you, everybody. I'll continue to uh, update you live as this uh, threat evolves. <clears throat> providing more of a, a storm chaser perspective. I'll tell you how, how I would chase these storms, where I'd position to see them. I've got some storm chaser friends that are out in the field sending me photos. I'll share those here as well. So thank you, everybody, for joining me during these live weather reports. Dominate the storm.